G'day guys, time for another one of Maxi's blogs. I'm very lucky to have one of my idols stand, sitting next to me, Riggy Ponting. Thank you very much for joining me. Pleasure, mate. Um, 2005, you played the first T20 International for Australia. We welcome the world into Eden Park, Auckland, New Zealand, the first ever 2020 International in the history of the game. You got 98 off 55 balls, and after the game you were heard to say it was a lot of fun, but it will never be taken seriously. <laughs> well, mate, we all thought that. Back then, I mean, we the first ever T20 game we played, and you'll remember seeing that the Kiwis with the big afros and the retro gear on and whatever else. We, we, I think we all felt that it was just going to be a promotional tool for the other formats of the game. Glenn McGrath, the team of all the underarm. Yeah, all that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Nearly as famous as many years ago with a smile. I mean, this is a fair income international game we're playing, but we, we all, well, I certainly felt in countries like New Zealand where cricket sort of not their biggest sport, that we were trying to do whatever we could do to promote the one day series that was coming up or the tests thereafter, but here we are 12 years on and everyone's talking about that game more than any other game. And again, that should go all Just the way. It. Just forget it. It's hit the top of the stand and bounced back. That's gone. That is gone out of here. Holy cow, Ponning might be lining up at 202000 um, Yeah, 98 in that first game. I still blame Mike Hussey because I think he faced the last two balls that innings and wouldn't let me give me a chance to get on strike. It looks like his skip is going to be stranded partnership. 77. A dot ball. Oh, brilliant stuff. A fancy finish. You had the highest score for a long time there as well. So your name, so we had uh, the statistics in the change room, like beat the best, be the best. Um, and your name was in the change room for a long time as a T20 team, like that was the personal best that we had to beat. Yeah, well there would have been one score in about 30 games I reckon <laughs> that I played. There, would have, there was probably another couple of 50s underneath that, but no other, no other big scores. No, I, yeah, and, I don't know, I'm not the biggest, strongest guy in the world, but I was, so the T20 game probably was just, a, just at the wrong time for me. I was probably just a little bit past my best um, as far as a, a batsman was concerned and never really um, came to grips with the game, playing the game anyway. I enjoy commentating it and, and coaching it now, but yeah, that was probably my finest moment on the T20 field, yeah. Yep, fast forward eight years, and you're in the Mumbai Indians outfit um, as captain of that team. Um, ended up winning the um, IPL and the Champions League. Um, you played a, a massive part in that, probably not so much for your on-field stuff, but a lot of the stuff that you did off the field. I remember as a player, the stuff you did, I suppose, coaching around the guys, was that, was that your first inclination of coaching could be a, a massive avenue for me going forward, or was that your first idea of this, this, this format, I could have a massive influence on Yeah, it? well, I think when I retired from the game, it's really hard to be involved in something as passionately as I was and as long as I was, and then just have it all completely stop. Yeah. Um, and the way my international career and even um, state career finished, it wasn't necessarily the way I, I, I planned it out. I was, you know, when I finished uh, in Perth my last test, obviously played the remainder of that summer with Tassie. We, we won the Sheffield Shield. It was actually my plan to play another Shield season as well, um, just to be around Tassie cricket and help some of the younger guys through that. But um, had a stint at Surrey, which I loved. Uh, had an IPL stint in between, and then went to the Caribbean, played the Caribbean League, and that was probably that was just. It was too much. It was uh, I wasn't enjoying playing when there was no bigger picture there for me. Um, so it didn't finish off the way I wanted it to. But um, yeah, look, I, I enjoyed every moment of, of, of every opportunity I had to play for my club, my state, uh, and my country, and, and all these other teams that I've been a part of. But when the playing side finished, I had to have something there. And coaching, um, I thought, I think, comes pretty naturally to me because the last few years that I played, I probably felt like a bit of a coach around most of the teams I was in anyway, because I was a senior player. I was trying to guide younger guys through and help them out where I could, so. Um, and that's what I tried to do at Mumbai, and you know, as you said, the playing thing didn't work, but I, I, in, as far as they're concerned, Mumbai were concerned, I don't think that was necessarily the main reason anyway. It was about, it was about maybe trying to improve a culture or do things differently, and, and yeah, we had success that year when I went as, as player, um, and captain had a year off, went back as, as head coach. We won that first year as well, so um, it's something I really enjoy. And, I'm looking forward to doing it more down the track. You might remember a little bit of this, but end of 2014, we sat down and had a chat before a Big Bash game, and I think one of your great strengths is having the ability to 
uh, find what sparks individuals and um, can get them up for certain moments. I remember I was at quite a low point um, during the season and quite soon after the um, obviously the, the leave incident at the Gabba and um, I was lucky enough to have your support during that time but what you said to me really stuck was to try and get back in the contest but we had a little bit of time together at Mumbai Indians, a little bit of time together at Surrey. Uh, do you reckon that's one of your strengths is being able to find the spark in someone and being able to manipulate it in a way to, to get them at their best? Or? Yeah, look, I, I really enjoy spending time with, with younger blokes that are trying to find their way um, in the game, because it's not easy. There's, there's all sorts of hurdles that can get in your way, and, and you can get in your own way as well, as far as the way you think about the game, the way you see the game, your way, the way you think um, there are probably more external pressures out there than there might, there might be. So, I mean, but when, when you asked me to come and sit down with you before that game, the reason I was jumped at the opportunity was Ever, every, every time I watched you play, I saw a lot of you in, or me, sorry, in you, the way you go about it with your fielding. And, and I've only learnt the last couple of days that you used to look at the way they went about things. I never knew that before. Um, so that was why, and I could just see that you're the, you were the sort of guy that just needed to get in a contest. You needed to puff your chest out and say, right, I'm out here, I'm in the field. You try and hit the ball past me. If you hit it to me, I'm going to throw it back at you. Um, when the bowler's coming in, you just need to engage and get yourself into a contest and because that, I knew that that would be the way that would, well I thought it would anyway, that would bring the best out in you, whereas, whereas others, you know, you know that, that doesn't work for them. Yeah. But um, I think that the fact that I've probably been around as many teams as I have and seen so many different personalities um, in good teams and in teams that have struggled and you know, when you see guys that are under pressure, you work them out pretty quickly and so I've, I've enjoyed that, you know, and I enjoyed that, enjoyed that the first coaching year at Mumbai when I had, you know, someone like a Harbhajan Singh that I'd had the biggest, probably, feud in inter international cricket history with for 15 years, and here I am turning up and I'm his head coach. And, um, you know, even guys like Kyron Pollard, who I thought I could improve if I could just change the way they thought about the game or improve their attitude. But I had to, I had to address that one-on-one -on -one with them and try and find a way to, to get the best out in them. And um, I think, you know, I think I'd have, I was able to do that to a, a reasonable degree. And, that's only because you, you you know from previous experience how to how to um, break down personalities and then and then treat them appropriately. Yeah.